everyone and welcome all to the People's Channel, Orchids for Dummies. Now, if you are a new beginner like me, then you're at the right place at the right time. Now, in today's video, we are going to be talking about orchid fertilizer, honey. We are going to be breaking it all the way down, honey. 10, 10, 10, 20, 20, 20. We want to know what does NPK means. Stay tuned, foul pals. Most new growers are saying, well, if I already have this and all of my plants are growing, orchids are plants. Okay, foul pals. A tip and trick for orchids that you want to know is what the American Orchid Society just said about having no to little urea. Now, what is urea? Stay tuned for the... Now, this is the People's Channel, meaning that anytime you need someone to talk orchid talk to, baby, we have a Facebook group on Facebook called Foul Pals, honey. Once you become a Foul Pal, you will have a family, a family of support system that will nurture you all the way through, honey. Anytime you have a dead orchid, honey, your foul pals are going to make you feel a little bit better. Also, it gives you just a little bit more access to me. Now, with that being said, foul pals, we are looking at all of these new videos saying how to fertilize your Phalaenopsis orchid. And we're looking at the fertilizers that they are using. We're looking at the brands that they are using. And so immediately, we are thinking we have to rush to the store and go get these things for our orchids to look big and beautiful and healthy. Well, first off, um, my fab pals, you are only going to use your fertilizer on a healthy orchid, a orchid that's already healthy, that does not need any extra assistance, such as if you have an orchid that looks like this, honey. If you have an orchid that looks like this, this is not what you want to be putting fertilizer in, okay? But that's a whole nother video. So, the first thing that we want to know is, what are trace elements, honey? Okay, so trace elements plays an important role in maintaining your orchid. But before you go out and buy fertilizer, let's dig a little deeper into the fundamentals of orchid fertilizer. Stay tuned. Now, foul pals, each fertilizer product advertises three numbers on front of the package. These numbers refer to the percentage of weight of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And that will give you the NPK. Okay, it's always listed in that order. Now, this is where the other channels are leaving us off because no one has broken it down. What are these trace elements? What are they needed for? And what, by the time, by the end of this video, you will understand what these numbers mean and you will have a better understanding on what supplements to give each and every Phalaenopsis orchid that you have. A orchid tip and trick that I want you to know is that each orchid is not the same, boo-boo. No, boo-boo kitty. Each orchid is an individual, just like people are individuals. So you want to give that orchid what that specific orchid needs. You can't mix a fertilizer and think that, oh my God, this is going to help all of my orchids. All of my orchids are going to look like Rick L. orchids. Honey, no ma'am, I tried it. It did not work. So now we are going to break this down and understand. Orchids for dummies, we're going to understand. Now, remember, a balanced fertilizer such as 202020 is made of equal parts of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, each representing 20%. Now, if you're like me, you are already saying, oh my God, honey, I, done, I gotta turn into a scientist. I gotta do equations and all of this stuff just to maintain a Phalaenopsis orchid. Well, baby, like I see it, you're at the right place at the right time. I am going to simplify this for you, okay? <laughs> well, foul pals, I know you're like, well, these numbers don't add up 20, 14, 13. How do I get my orchids to 100? Well, baby, that's not what you're trying to do. What you are trying to do is investigate each and every orchid and say, how can I make this orchid better, okay? Now, each orchid does need different nutrients. Now, now you see this orchid? She is my favorite orchid. Her name is Blue, and she is in her vegetative state. Ha-ha! Ha-ha! 
vegetative state means that she is in the process of growing new leaves and new roots. So that is where that 20 is going to come up. Okay, foul pals. Now understand that the NPK, the NPK is nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Now, how does that translate to what we need for our orchid? Now, foul pals, the reason that you hear about NPK all the time is because those are the essential nutrients needed for your Phalaenopsis orchid. However, there are other elements that you would need, such as magnesium sulfate, copper, and um, um, zinc. These are also things that you need as well. As you can see, they the numbers are very minute, foul pals. So, that lets you know that the majority um, that you need is going to be the NPK, the nitrogen, um, phosphorus, and potassium. Now, that leads me to these other um, fertilizers, the seaweed extract. A lot of us are like, oh my God, if I get some seaweed extract, then my roots will grow. Well, 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 we are going to break all of that down, honey. This is a series, so stay tuned. This um, cow mag, um, the garden line, these are supplements, okay? These are supplements to the minor, the minor macronutrients that your phalaenopsis eat, need. But in today's video, we are only going to focus on um, the NPK. Understanding what the NPK means is the nitrogen, okay? Breaking it down, orchids for dummies. Nitrogen promotes growth we can see on top of the pot. Okay, foul pals? So don't get to thinking that if you have a lot of nitrogen, then your Phalaenopsis orchid is going to give you big, beautiful blooms. Girl, no ma'am. Nitrogen is for, um, nitrogen promotes growth in the parts of the plant that we can see above the potting mix, such as the foliage. Okay, just to make it real simple. Your phosphorus, which is going to be that second number. Phosphorus is responsible for the part of the orchid beneath the potting mix. Your orchid roots, okay? Um, it encourages strong root systems and is responsible for healthy blooms. So no, no ma'am, foul pals, just because you got that higher first number does not mean that you have um, a better chance of having bigger, better, more dynamic blooms. No ma'am, that's actually your second number, okay? And potassium. Potassium is very crucial for your orchid's overall health. Now, my foul pal Todd has been dealing with um, a lot of bugs eating his um, outdoor plants. So, what I would tell foul pal Todd is that you need your, your plants need a little bit more potassium, okay? Because it's important, this um, nutrient is important and it helps deals with the stress associated with things such as bugs, with temperature changes, and diseases. Okay, we're going to talk about that as well, foul pals. All righty, foul pals. So hopefully now you have an understanding of NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Now, as it said, it has some minor elements, okay, on the back of the package. Now, this is going to be a um, complete orchid fertilizer. It is, you want um, numbers that are going to be even, such as 10, 10, 10, 20, 20, 20. I don't know where to find any of that at, so maybe you have the same problem. So that is the difference between a balanced fertilizer, you have your boom booster. A lot of us think that if we have boom bloom boosters, then our phalaenopsis will have such a um, good success and growing big blooms, or um, it would bloom for us even faster. Now, as, oh man, as you can see with this bottle that I have never even used, um, the title, total nitrogen in it is going to be just 1%. You also have some calcium, which is 1%. Now, all of this is going to play a part with the supplements because you have your garden line, you have your cow magic, and you have your seaweed extract. These are supplements. So what we are supplementing are the low numbers, the 14 and the 13. We want to bring that 14 and that 13 as close to 20 
as possible. Well, how do we do that? Stay tuned for a later video, darling. Stay tuned for a later video. And don't let me forget the magnesium sulfate, my absolute favorite, okay, foul pals? So turning on the back of the package because it said it has some minor elements. Okay, so what do we see on the back of this package? Um, um, it's endorsed by the American Orchid Society, and it shows you how to apply it. Now, as I was reading, and I get all of my information from Google, Google search engine, honey. All of this stuff, I will leave the links to the sites that gave me the most information in the description box below. Also, I have a couple of videos that will be um, helpful in bringing all of this together, such as how to water my orchids, understanding pH with Rick L from Rick L Orchids, and also my video, Basic Orchid Care. It kind of breaks all of this down just a little bit more, but stay tuned to the end of this video before you leave. Now, according to the American Orchid Society, fertilizers used on orchids should contain little to no urea. This is because soil organisms must first convert the nitrogen and urea to a form usable by orchids. So, Fab Pals, what that means is, in some of my previous videos, I was telling you um, the heat and the humidity, it works and it breaks down the fertilizer. Because once you put this fertilizer in your pot, it does not necessarily um, mean that your orchid is um, absorbing those nutrients. So that's why you want to take a look at that pH video to understand how to maintain a healthy pH system in your orchid pot. But, and since orchids do not grow in soil, this conversion does not occur efficiently. The old conventional wisdom used to be that orchids grown in bark mixes need to be fertilized um, in high nitrogen. For example, 30 10 10. They now understand that high nitrogen fertilizers aren't even necessary. Okay, Fab Pal, so if you are like me, then you want to say, hey, let's make that make sense, okay? <laughs> well, you know, I have a video saying, can you plant orchids in um, potting soil? Now, this is planted in potted soil. It came like that. And what this means is, um, and this is a um, dendrobium, so this is not going to be typical for your Phalaenopsis orchid. Phalaenopsis orchids grow at the top of trees, without being in soil. So they're getting all of their nutrients from the natural elements, Mother Nature. Now, any of you that have pothos or house plants in general, then you know that, okay, the soil that you planted your plant in, then this is going to be appropriate because this is based, this is based solely for um, potting soil because potting soil has something called urea in it. And urea is something that you do not want for your Phalaenopsis orchids because they have been linked to uh, um, OCD, honey, or orchid transmitted disease called Pseudomonia. Okay, so you don't want your orchids to have these diseases and carry on to your other orchids. If you look on the bottom of this and you start to get all down here in the um, nutrients that this is providing, as you can see, it says the 12% um, urea nitrogen. Now you don't want the new you you don't want urea in your orchids, baby. So you're not going to use this, okay? You're not going to use this. So I hope I make I hope all of this is making sense to you guys. I want us to have the most successful orchid growing experience that we can have. But the first thing first, we have to understand the basic things about the Phalaenopsis orchid, the trace elements. We don't know what no trace elements are, baby. <laughs> Now, Foul Pals, this is the part of the um, video where I will ask you to like, comment, and subscribe. Now, when you press the subscribe button, there is a little bell next to it. If you ring that bell, then you will get email notifications firsthand when I post a video. Now, this is a series that you want to stay tuned to. Also, everyone that knows anything about Work is for Dummies, honey, know that I believe in the saying, each one teach one. So with that being said, I've come across a channel that I would like to um, share with you guys. It's a new up and coming channel called um, Rocky M. 
plants and gardens. Now, he only has about 12 videos. I do not know this person. Um, he has not even spoken with me. I just came across this video after mine played, and I saw that he was from Canada. And um, Canada and my Canadian friends have supported me almost as much as my American friends. So anything that Canada needs from me, honey, I am going to be here for you. So if you like this video, stay tuned, honey. Until next time.